Oh, okay, hey everybody, how you doing? Um, I've been trying to think of other movies, not to review, but just to suggest, suggest uh, to watch for Halloween. And I couldn't think of any, but I finally thought some, I wrote them down, so I'm going to tell them to you. You've probably already seen it and I'm being redundant or whatever, but if you haven't, then you can check them out. So I didn't write these in any particular order, but the one I could not remember was uh, 1994's The Lurking Fear, directed by C. Courtney Joyner, starring Ashley Lawrence, Kirsty from Hellraiser, and Jeffrey Combs. And it is, it's a full moon movie. It's not it's not great, but and I think a lot of people would say even it's not very good, but I like it. I remember seeing it, maybe I rented it, or I saw it on cable, and I was like, yeah, it was a, you know, it's no Reanimator or, uh, or Hellraiser, but watching it again, I really liked it, the, wherever they filmed it, in Europe, the town, just the whole feel of the movie just has a very desolate, like, um, barren atmosphere to it, just isolated, and just other, almost otherworldly, and then the fact that they're in, I think it's a church, and it's pretty much a siege movie, it, it reminded me of Night of the, the original Night of the Living Dead, you know, a couple of people s stuck in a place, they're being assaulted by forces from the outside, in this case, underground, there's inner turmoil in between, and again, it's got Jeffrey Combs and Ashley Lawrence, and uh, it's only like an hour 20 minutes maybe so if you haven't seen it or if you've seen it and you didn't like it or whatever watch it again second one is another movie that's not very good but I, I like it Swamp of the Ravens I don't even actually I, I don't even know if I've actually paid attention <laughs> but I put it on and it just has like a hypnotizing effect on me and again the atmosphere just the way it looks the feel it's just weird and it, it makes me think of Shockwave. Shockwaves is another movie that I just put on any time and it kind of like hypnotizes me and I just can watch just fascinating for some reason, for whatever reason. Gives me that feeling. Uh, 1983's Revenge of the Dead, aka Zetter, directed by Poopy Avati. Uh, this is one I rented a long time ago when I was just recording stuff on the tapes. I remember I wanted to make like an awesome... A zombie tape so I'm pretty sure I put the time Seven Doors of Death and maybe City of the Living Dead it even could have been Night of the Zombies Hell of the Living Dead and then I put this Revenge of the, of the Dead aka Zetter at the end And but it's not a gory zombie movie it's just more again another like scary atmospheric like it has to do with the undead like this guy he buys a typewriter and it has an ink cartridge still in there and you can like pull it out he goes to the trouble of reading it and it's like a story about this place where you can bury a, a corpse and it'll come back to life and there's people trying that know that he has this so they're trying to stop him uh, I've even heard people say uh, Stephen King maybe like took a little bit from this. I don't know. Maybe he's terrible, so maybe he did. But I want to see it again. It's on YouTube. It looks pretty good quality. It's got English subtitles, so maybe if I can. Uh, I have some movies, so many movies I want to review for Halloween time, October time. But maybe I can squeeze it in there. Then uh, one I think a lot of people already know about that. Um, Every time I watch it and I hear, see other reviews, it, it just gets better. 1987's Hello Mary Lou Prom Night 2. Uh, yeah, just all the different movies it mixes in. The special effects are good. Uh, just every, all the ideas. The, the, the blonde girl is really good. And then the, the actress that plays Mary Lou, Lisa Schrage, she's, I never noticed it before. She's really pretty. She's like gorgeous. And I looked her up. She she came out in Food of the Gods too. And I kind of like hate her in that. Because she 
always has this like vapid death like stare and like, she has no reaction in that and then Palm Night too she's awesome she's amazing but she really didn't do much I wonder why I wonder if like she wouldn't play ball or I mean, you know whatever or I'm sure maybe just something you know she couldn't continue but she's great in this and then other, others I wanted to mention like in that late 80s early 90s 976 Evil Part 2 I have that on like a collection it's not bad it's I mean it's not good but it, it gives you that feeling like if you're looking for that 80s wait eight. 80s, late 80s, 90, 91 horror movie feel. It's got that. And, and the first one, 976 Evil, is good too. Finally, uh, 2004 Skin Deep, directed by Gabe Bartolos. I remember renting this because it was a Fangoria movie, like presentation DVD movie. And uh, on the cover has the, the surgeon. The general surgeon, I think he's called. He's like a bear trap mouth, goggles. Uh, he's like a zombified face, kind of what you can see. I think he has a long black coat, like a knife. I think they tried to make him like seem like a Freddy Jason Michael Myers. He's, he belongs to a family. They also describe it like a chainsaw massacre, but more comedic. And it's just weird. Gabe Bartalos, uh, he made a good little horror movie. Just a weird, whacked out, gory, crazy movie. Uh, and Gabe Bartalos, he did effects. I mean, from beyond Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2, Friday the 13th, Jason Lives, Gremlins 2, Dark Man, Godzilla 98. And he even did uh, effects on that new movie, Army of the Dead. But at least, you know, he got a good payday, I hope. Those are just some movies, but um, I also ordered some movies today. I ordered... Um, what is it? The Be Fulci's of Beyond. Beyond Darkness. Pieces. And something from 1988 called Murder Secret. Murder Secret. From, no, I should have checked it out again. Uh, Bianchi, the, is it Martino, Martini Bianchi? Uh, I forgot what he did, but it sounded terrible. So let's we'll see that. And uh, I, I wrote some more of my story. That's terrible, also, but it's almost done. Uh, I feel kind of good about it. Just monster story. I wrote about ten pages. I don't know, maybe another two, three. Probably two pages will be done. If you want to read it, let me know. I need, I'll need to type it out and put it in. Or just like slap the pages together. Or maybe I could email it, I guess. You could let me know how bad it is. But what is not bad that I'm reading right now that I'm really into is the steak. I got to page 204 today. I read about, man, 74 pages today. And uh, Richard Lehman has written three vampire movies, and I would say 80% of each book has nothing to do with vampires, but they're still great. This one is, like, I'm just really getting into it. So, yeah, this guy Larry Dunbar, his wife, Jean, his, his, neighbor, his married couple neighbor, Pete and Barbara, they went to a ghost town, they, they found a coffin underneath the stairway with with a desiccated corpse with a stake in it. They freak out. They leave and then uh, Pete tells Larry, Larry's a writer. He's like, dude, you can write a book about it. And he's like, let's go get it. Let's go bring the coffin back. We'll pull the stake out of the out of the heart and we'll see what happens. You can write a book about it. So they actually go do that. They get drunk in the, like late at night. Pete's wife goes to sleep. Larry's wife is out of town and they go and, and they get the, the coffin with the corpse in it but just them going there getting everything that happens like there's no so far there's no gore or craziness but 
man, Layman can set a mood and like just he's always like what's out there like because they're traipsing around through the dark and uh, it's pretty much like a desert they gotta go down this hill because they go into the like the first they had seen a, a jukebox while they were there and Pete's like we'll get go get the jukebox and because he was gonna write a book about the like the possessed jukebox and he's all uh, you know we'll bring it I'll fix it because he's like a fix it man he could write a book about it but they Larry and Pete both know that like, Pete wants to get the the coffin with the, with the vampire in it but when they're when they go looking for the jukebox you know it's dark they have a flashlight Pete has a gun they're looking for it and they see like a campfire not, it's not on but like uh, the remnants you know the ashes and Pete touches it and he's like man it's still warm Larry gets scared Larry's a scary cat and he touches it and he's like oh you jerk he's like it's not warm he's like yeah but it scared you didn't I but then they see like a, a pile of rocks and on the top rock is a severed head of a coyote with the eyes poked out and they're like holy hell there's like and there were bones in the in the fire and, and they're like was, did someone like cook this coyote and eat it and there was some they call him ragu the coyote eater <laughs> he just makes up all this stuff in his head like he's like is he out there is he watching us and like is and uh someone had put like before when they had, they had to break into the hotel where the coffin was and he's like is he the one who put the lock on there and just all these crazy thoughts going through through his head through larry's head he's a main character and uh pete's always like he doesn't really seem to he's not worried well he has a gun so they t they've taken the coffin back to Larry's house and hit it in the garage where they think his wife won't see it and then he he like wrote like 70 80 pages about about he wanted to write a true book a true horror novel about something that really happened so he's writing about this whole ordeal that they're going through <laughs> and it, it's just Layman really just he is different like all these horror movies that they come out with in books that you know, they say like you know they're all they're all the same or there's no one's coming out with anything new uh layman was doing it this is from 91 like this i can't i mean if you can i can't think of anything of you know if i think about it really hard something that's like this and yeah not well there's not much there's like perverted stuff but i guess there is because larry's like always checking out Pete's wife Barbara he's always like looking at her thighs or her chest or you know, the legs and the chest so <clears throat> that's so far at stake I mean I recommend this but any of all the movies I talked about um, yeah I just want to do something else for Halloween some more get some more thoughts down let me know if you think of any of what you think of any of the stuff i talked about and just tell me to go uh, jump in the lake and um swim out and i'll see you tomorrow